morning panel. My name is Stephen Bell. I'm from a company, Bell Lane Coffee Limited. We are an artisan coffee roastery, hand roasting coffee for the commercial coffee industry. What we do is we roast our coffee individually. Um, a lot of coffees like this are blended, so there's more than one bean involved in it. How we blend or how we roast our coffee is we roast each bean individually, so we retain the flavour of the coffee bean. We roast them individually take them aside and then we post blend them afterwards to maintain the consistency of flavour. What we have developed is we have developed a coffee that is very non-acidic or non-harsh for the commercial industry. We're trying to encourage the second cup of coffee. If you're in the commercial environment, you can sell two cups of coffee to the one individual in a certain space of time, you're making more revenue than they would be selling one cup of coffee. By the way we roast our coffee, we roast it a lot slower at a lot lower temperatures, so we look after the bean. We don't blast the bean with heat. Our roasting takes probably 20% longer to do than a standard commercial roastery, but the end result for us is a much better, more consistent product. So that's Bell Lane Coffee. Um, any questions? Presenting Bell Lane Coffee, an artisan coffee roastery, Stephen explains the process of roasting all the coffees individually and post-blending to maintain consistency of flavour. The judges look forward to tasting the balanced flavour and minimal bitterness. Is the business plan that you would be branded front of house as Bell Lane or is it very much a back of house brand? We're, we're more concerned in the coffee product being served that, you know, be it our brand or someone else's brand, that the feedback from it is positive, that the staff training, that people know how to treat the coffee well and look after it. Yes, we would love to have branding everywhere, but we are obviously doing own label for other people as well as a margin. As a business, we're looking at a, at a low margin business, but ideally it's branded coffee we're trying to sell. We want people to buy into the brand of what we do, our story, why we've done it, why we get the taste out of it, and why we spend 20-30% longer roasting our coffee to get this result. You know? right. What, what do consumers say about your coffee? How do they describe it? There's a percentage of people out there, 60 to 70 people, who enjoy coffee, but they don't really know what's in it, but they know what they're looking for in a taste. We're not strong coffee, we're not light coffee. We're in that 70% catchment where people want a good cup of coffee, and they'll say, yeah, that's nice, I'm going to have a second one of those. So we are, we are, the consumers like our coffee, it would be a balanced, good flavour, smooth coffee is what we, we, we are known as, you know. We're trying to encourage that second cup of coffee and we're trying to push that in marketing and stuff now called the second cup of coffee. Okay. If I go into a coffee shop and get a standard Americano for, mm -hmm. for two fifty, is so it it's, it's likely a guideline. to be more expensive than? No, well, we, we aren't more expensive. We've, we've set up our business model to be a commercial business, so we're interested in moving volume at a good price. That's what we're about. We're not in the niche market of speciality where it's kind of less volume at a higher price, you know. The coffees we deal with, the Moon Dust Espresso, for example, is a three bean roast. So there's a Colombian, Brazilian, Sumatran coffee in it, broken down into percentages. That would be our standard coffee we would sell. Outside that, you go to a Dragonfly, you're getting into more speciality, but not into the pricing of speciality. That's a Nicaraguan, Ethiopian blend, so it's a different taste profile. But you're getting, to, if you're dealing with gentlemen on the high street or ladies of coffee shops and they want something more speciality, but not at the price, that's what they would go for. We have five different espresso blends at the moment and we're always looking for new ideas and new ways to bring in new taste profiles and stuff. I, I suppose when I see a coffee product, I see so many competitors and it's a niche market now. Yeah. There's so many artisan suppliers and big chains and I just want to know what do you bring that's different to the table? A lot of commercial coffees are just high volume roasted coffees in mass to get a drink out. We're trying to bring something with a little more finesse and a bit of a story behind it to the commercial market. We're never going to take over a large chunk of the market that has been dominated by big coffee roasters, but we can certainly get involved and take percentages of it there and give awareness and build a nicer tasting coffee to get that second cup sale is what we're trying for. Yeah, but if the product was to become successful, that mm. may be yeah. That may happen. So but I suppose it's, it's for us to look at and keep the way we roast our coffee, keeping it at that way by upscaling but keeping the artisan feel and touch to it. Talk to us a little bit about how you're going to deliver on this ambition around the second cup piece. By people tasting the coffee, they will, number one, get to like it. The marketing side of it, there you go. The marketing side of it, what we're doing is we are we're implementing through Twitter on our branding a hashtag worth the second cup, which we're trying to implement at the moment. The biggest side of it is the person making and delivering the coffee at the end of the day. 
if they can understand how to move a queue, work with customers coming in a queuing environment to work that through and get the throughput, that will increase sales. Colleen? Um, I would be concerned about the amount of competition in the marketplace and yeah. the clientele we deal with on a daily basis. Um, so I'm not 100% sure. I think we do need more speciality coffee in our portfolio. So I'm going to say yes Thank to you, you guys. Thank yeah. you. I just think the level of competition and the amount of suppliers, to me, it just doesn't bring anything different mm. really at the minute. That's not to say moving forward things yeah. will change, but uh, I would have to say no on that. Okay. Thank you. I like the different approach that you're taking in terms of the second cup and so mm -hmm. on, but I'm still trying to grasp that. So, you know, for that reason, uh, perhaps further down the line, but I, um, right now I would say a no from me. Thank you. I do like your story, yeah. um, but I, I am struggling to understand whether it's significantly different enough in order for it to be quite compelling. Um, on a personal level, I like it, but I'm just not getting the brand strength. Okay. So unfortunately, it's a no for me. Okay. No problem. Thank you. But thank you very much anyway. No problem. Appreciate thank your time. You. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Cheers. Mixed reviews from the judges who are not sure that the coffee and its processing is different enough in this very competitive market. Unfortunately for Compass, right now it's really not worth the second cup.